Let's begin in Brazil. It now has the third highest number of confirmed coronavirus infections. There are over 260,000 registered cases. Only the US and Russia have more. That's not the whole story. Experts are saying the true number could be almost 15 times higher. However, we should say the number of fatalities in Brazil is lower than several European countries. Now, this shows the trajectory of the daily total of recorded deaths. Unlike in those European countries with high death tolls, the daily rate of fatalities hasn't started to significantly decrease in Brazil. Here's the analysis of the BBC's Camila Mota in Sao Paulo. In a country with continental proportions like Brazil, huge inequality, the disease manifests in different ways. In Sao Paulo, for example, mortality and infection rates are higher in the outskirts of the city, in poor neighborhoods. In those areas, people say it's hard to comply with social distancing measures because they need to work and there is no way for them to do home office. In the richest city in the country, around 35% of the labor force is in the informal economy. Cases are multiplying all over the place. In the state of Amazonas, where the healthcare system has already collapsed, we're now seeing the disease hitting indigenous communities, some of them located in remote areas. In the meantime, President Jair Bolsonaro keeps clashing with state governors because he's against quarantine measures and keeps repeating that the economy can't stop. A couple of weeks ago, when asked about the surging number of cases by journalists, he replied merely, so what? What do you want me to do? Bolsonaro's rhetoric resonates with part of the population, a small but loud group that, despite the current situation, organizes demonstrations against social distancing measures, and it's very vocal on social media. Well, from Camilla in Brazil, next we turn to Chile, because we've also seen there opposition to the lockdown that's in place. We're going to hear from the capital, Santiago, now. Chile has had more than 46,000 cases of COVID-19 so far, with close to 500 deaths. And a recent surge in cases prompted a strict lockdown in the capital over the weekend. And that led to what you can see here. This was just outside the city. Protesters who were particularly objecting to food shortages clashed with police who were using tear gas and water cannon. Here are some of the protesters. I'm a taxi driver. I can't make a living because which passengers can I pick up? And what does the government give us? Help, food. It's not quarantine we want. We need help and food. It's food that people are asking for right now. Well, after those protests, the president promised to get food to those who need it. And this tweet is from the mayor of Santiago. It says that the government is now planning to deliver two and a half million boxes of food. The tweet emphasises that this is an unprecedented effort and it goes on to say, food will reach those who need it in the coming week. Please stay home. Now, Chile is not the only place where people are struggling with food shortages. Let's also look at the situation in Mexico. Drug cartels have exploited the absence of a coordinated state response and they've started delivering food and essential goods themselves. This is a report in the Mexican news website Sin Embargo. It contains a video put out by the cartel advertising what the cartel is calling its food brigade. While BBC Monitoring's Luis Fajardo has been looking at this issue for us. Mexican drug cartels have traditionally operated through intimidation, but now they want to appear as allies of the people, allies of these communities who are suffering a great deal in economic terms because of the pandemic and they don't expect a lot from their government. One of the ways this is working out is through so-called food brigades, these fairly elaborate logistics operations that are being set up by the cartels to feed entire communities in isolated or impoverished areas of the country. For example, the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, which is one of the biggest drug trafficking structures in Mexico, has been spotted in Veracruz State, feeding more than 400 people in one of these occasions. Now, this is not the only group nor is it the first time that they employ these tactics. Even in the 1980s in Colombia with the Medellin cartel, Pablo Escobar was involved with this type of operation. But what has changed now is the social media sophistication of their efforts to distribute across the population this message that they are allies of the community. These uh, videos are appearing in social media, even some of them apparently with drone shots, 
showing the envoys of the cartel distributing this food and other types of aid in these communities. Also, they're engaging in branding. The Sinaloa cartel has been reportedly distributing food packages with the picture of El Chapo Guzman, the famous, the infamous drug trafficker who's now in jail in, in the US. And other organizations, other drug organizations are involved in this uh, type of struggle to capture the hearts and minds of the Mexican people in the continued fight between drug cartels and the government, which clearly continues throughout this time of pandemic.